that come about and more Michael coming out of the back end and, and why a panther? Uh, I'm not sure why a panther except Michael's always been fascinated with cats and Janet's been fascinated with cats and they have a lot of animals and in Smooth Criminal we used a cat walking along a piano and um, uh, and Michael I guess moves like a feline you know so um, there's that fascination with it. Um, originally when the dance wasn't as large as the dance is now on um, the film, Michael felt that we should create a section that happened post the song where we would really just see him dancing by himself and um, the way that he conceived it was that he was, a, we saw a panther and that the panther morphed into him and that um, he created a whole scene that was about being an animal and uh, experiencing a rebirth and um, rebirth basically means violence and um, I was a little upset that people, no, I don't want to talk about that right now. Can you, can you just ask a one line liner about the rebirth okay. being violence? Just, okay. just make it a short little statement. Okay. So I think Michael wanted to um, uh, morph from a panther and uh, into himself and then do a piece about violence and morph back into a panther because it was about um, the animal instinct and birth and rebirth and um, birth and rebirth always uh, uh, travels with violence. Thus became the alley sequence. Yes, the alley sequence, you know, I, I, the alley sequence was about two scenes, two, two things. It was, it was analogous to uh, Macaulay Culkin's fantasy at the beginning where he's frustrated with his family and goes through a bizarre fantasy of blowing his father through the roof. Now we know that's not real, you know. And Michael's was about the frustration of people not, people, people being racist and not being able to just deal with black or white or yellow or red or green and and the, and the violence that you feel inside, it was a fantasy. That's, it was never meant to be actual, it was a fantasy. That's why he morphed from a panther and back into a panther. It's not Michael doing it, it's this fantastical character. Um, so I, I find it a little upsetting that people took it so harshly. But on the other hand, I find it very, very positive because there are very few heroes in the world. And my heart was really warmed to know that both children and adults see Michael as a hero, you know, there's actually a person in the world that represents peace and harmony, and that's Michael Jackson. And when he steps outside of that, people just can't deal with it. And at first where I was um, sort of angered at Michael's um, lack of artistic freedom, of, of people allowing him to have artistic freedom, my second reaction was, wow, we actually have a hero, you know, and um, made me very happy. What, <clears throat> so in other words, basically Michael's motivation towards that whole sequence is kind of just, you know, an animal, you know, allowing through through the eyes of an animal to become, you know, to let all loose. Yeah, no, I think that, I think that Michael's what Michael wanted to create with this alley was this sort of allegorical sense of frustration, you know, of getting your frustrations out, you know, allowing the animal instinct inside of you to take over, you know, and, 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 and vent your frustrations in different ways. And, I mean, the car was an old junker, it wasn't a real operative car. And we were very concerned that the warehouse wasn't an operating warehouse, you know, it was an old beat up place, it just had boxes in it. Um, we really didn't, we never wanted it to look like looting, we only wanted it to appear that um, it was about frustration and fantasy, you know, it was really fantasy. And, um, you know, allowing yourself to express that anger, but in a fantastical situation, not in a real one. Michael's not a violent person at all. Okay. Let's just go back. <clears throat> we can talk about each of the ethnic dances just one more time. Okay. And just give us kind of a little brief synopsis of, of each of them. Okay. The Africans. Um, the Africans were actually six gentlemen who um, are dancers. 
and I put together a piece from a lot of Afro-Cuban um, steps that I had studied over the past 12 years. And, um, you know, nothing is truly authentic, um, but it's all taken from authentic movement. The only thing I can say that's purely authentic um, is the Native American Indians, because I had nothing to say to them other than what I wanted, and Yamuna doing Odissi, because I knew nothing about the language of that dance before I met her. The Thai is almost purely traditional movement that I recomposed and um, added a little here, snipped a little there, so that it would work within the context of the song. Uh, the patterns are not authentic. The movement and gestures are completely authentic. The Native American Indians did all their own dancing. I saw many Native American Indians, and we used several different kinds. The little girls doing what's called the jingle dance. Uh, two of the guys do a completely freestyle movement, which would be comparable to street dancing in Native American terms. And the older man does the traditional dancing. Um, it's, I, I can't remember the name of it right now, but what he represents is a crow who's stomping down um, the grass with his feet before he's going to make his nest. Um, the East Indian woman named Yamuna does a dance form called Odissi, which is basically um, a Hindu dance form. Um, as she moves, her fingers represent stories, and they also represent the drum. So if she's doing a move that goes here and flips to here, what it symbolizes is that she's hitting the side of the drum, then she's becoming the sound of the drum as it resounds around her body. Um, the first piece where Michael's singing, I put my message in the Saturday Sun, and she's doing, it, she's doing a situation like this where her eyes are huge, She's representing a god, and she's standing in a second position, very masculine pose. She represents a Hindu god who has a huge head and a little body and big, big eyes. Almost his entire head are just his eyes because he's an all-seeing god. So that's the movement that she's doing when she rolls her eyes from side to side is the symbol of this god. It's absolutely fascinating dance piece. How about the location of the, of the freeway? <laughs> that doesn't mean anything. It's just fantasy. The, lo the location of, of um, the location of the Odissi dance with Yamuna and Michael Jackson was just complete craziness. Um, Michael and I decided that since we were sort of creating the dance section together.